Hello, my dear friends. Parsha Shlach is unbelievably relevant. It, it, it paints a contemporary picture of the world in which we live. The, the Torah describes the episode of the Miraglim. Twelve spies went to see Eretz Zoh. Their job was to spy, to see what kind of land it was. So, you know, the expression is, seeing is believing, but it's not true. You can have two people looking at the same exact thing and what they see is worlds apart. It's like a Rorschach test. One person looks at it and he sees monsters all over the place. Another person sees beautiful flowers. Beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Reality depends on how you look at it. It's not fixed. It's not like this is what it is. Two people could see exactly the same thing and come away with a whole different impression. Uh, a, a terrific example, I was once at Niagara Falls, standing there looking at the falls and magnificent, overwhelming, the beauty of, of the world, that, of nature that Kaddish Baruch created. And there was a guy standing next to me, he says, this is it? This is the big Niagara Falls? This is a, a bunch of water. I could turn on the faucet in, in my bathtub and watch the water go down. What do I need to go to Niagara Falls for? The same place. It'd be, you could have the same thing play out at a museum. You could stand in front of the Mona Lisa. One person says, wow, my whole life I'm waiting to see the Mona Lisa. What a, what a masterpiece. And another person says, that's it. <laughs> This is the Mona Lisa. Big deal. It's just a picture of some lady that's trying to smile but having a hard time. So everything depends on how you look at it. And that's what the story of the Miragam is all about. For Eretz Yisrael, it's the most wonderful place in the world. We all, we all go, we go to Eretz Yisrael. We, we, we're constantly taking trips to Eretz Yisrael. And you go there, it's, and it's not only the beauty of the land, but it's, it's so inspiring. The, the Kedusha. Is, 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 you could feel it when you walk in, off the plane. So here's the Miraglim. So 10 spies came back and they said, this is a terrible place. It's miserable. It's horrible. It's Eretz Ochel Shveha. It's a land that consumes the people because Rashi says that the, God wanted to distract the people from not to be busy with the Miraglim, not to notice them. And there was a lot of people dying. There were a lot of Levites. So that's what they said. It's Eretz Ochel Shveha. It will never survive in, 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 in Eretz Yisrael. And what did the Kohen and Yeshua say? No, it's wrong. It's Tova or it's Ma'od, Ma'od. It, the land is, is very good. And they didn't just, Ma'od, Ma'od means, Ma'od means much. It's, it's redundant, no? Tova or it's Ma'od? Ma'od, what is it, Ma'od, Ma'od? But it's for emphasis. What are you talking about? You people are crazy. It's the best place in the world. It's Tova or it's Ma'od, Ma'od. It's magnificent. It's unbelievable. It's not only the beauty of the land, it's the Kedusha. The Moroccan, they didn't see anything. They didn't see the Kedusha, they didn't see the beauty. All they saw was a place that Eretz HaChel Sushver, and they swayed the hearts of the people. And the people, in the end, they stayed up the whole night, and they were crying. And they, This was like a national tragedy that was taking place for them. What, what, what's going on? Do you have a chance to go into Eretz So and you say it's a national tragedy? It reminds me so much of the of, of the attitude that people have about America today. They think they 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 demonize America. They say it's the worst place in the world, and it's built on built on on, on sins and corruption and all sorts of terrible things in their past history. What's wrong with them? This is America is is the most what next era it's Israel. It's the most wonderful place. It's a democracy. It's the land of freedom. It's the land of of opportunity for everybody. But you could take anything, you could take something that's wonderful and beautiful and you could trash it and you could say it's no good. The the the, the sin of the Miragam, Rashi in, in Parsha's Bahalosa alludes to the fact that it was triggered by an event that took place in, in, in last week's Parsha and that is the misonanim, the complainers. They, they, and Rashi says, what were they complaining about? They complained about the fact that they had to travel so much. And Rashi says, they were supposed to travel to Eretz in three days. It was miraculous. You can't travel from, from where they were in the desert to Eretz in three days. God was making a miracle. But they complained. And because they complained, so they ended up, and then they started to complain about the man, and then they complained about Eretz Yisrael, and then they had the Miragam, and then they ended up, because they were misayinim, because they were kvetches, 
because they were complainers. For a complainer, nothing is good. It starts with the with the traveling. Then it goes the Monday where they wanted they wanted to have meat. They they wanted to have onions and they wanted to have garlic. They they were tired of mom all all day long. Mom mom was magnificent. But all they did was complain and fetch. For a fetch, everything is no good. And that led to the Miraglim, and the Miraglim led to the dying in the desert for 40 years. And that's what we have, unfortunately, today. We've got a, a country full of misonanism, people who are fetches, people who are complainers, people who don't see, only see negativity. They don't see the good. And that, it, it's not only on a national level, but every single person can, this need, decides what type of world am I living in. It's not given. It's not like the, the world's good or it's not not good. It depends on what you make of it. I told the story many times of my mother, Allah Hashem. We went to, my mother was a super positive person, always optimistic and always saw the good. We went to a bungalow colony. I loved going to a bungalow colony as a child. My parents took us every year outside in the, the you, you're, you're closer to the Rebona Zone. You could see the stars in the sky. So we were we went to a bungalow colony, sight unseen. Friends and my parents were going to a certain bungalow. I don't, I don't remember what city it was in. And when we came there, the bungalow, I, we, my, my, my parents didn't see it in advance. It was the world's biggest dump. Now, bungalows in general are not, you know, the Taj Mahal. <laughs> They're rickety. The bungalows, I remember the bungalows were used to, well, you couldn't put things on the shelf because they were, bungalows were on an angle. So the things would slide down. That's how bungalows were. They, and they were patched together. They had boards here and boards there. And they, 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 they didn't invest a lot of money in the bungalows. But it was we had a wonderful time in the summer in the bungalows. So, but one year we came to a bungalow. Our, our hearts sank. My brother, my sister, myself. This is where we're going to spend the summer the next eight weeks. And my mother said, what are you talking about? We're going to make it beautiful. We're going to make it work. And my mother spent the next 24 hours and she washed everything and she put us all to work and each one of us had a job. And she got rid of all the grime and grease that was on the on the walls and on the windows and she put up shades and, and pictures and she bought, a, I remember she bought a new tablecloth for the table so it should be pretty. And we had the most wonderful time. And, and, and to us, that bungalow was beautiful. It was magnificent. So everything, it, dep- uh, it all depends. Its beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. It's what you make of it that determines what it is. For one person, oh, it's, oh, it's the world's biggest dump in the world. For us, it was the most beautiful. I wish we could go back to that beautiful bungalow where we spent that summer. I don't remember how many years ago. I was about 65 years ago. But that's how it is. Everything in life, it all depends what you make of it. And that's why the end of the parsha is so fitting. The parsha of Tzitzis is the end of parsha Shlach. And everybody asks, what does Tzitzis have to do with Shlach? And the answer is, it's so obvious. Because Tzitzis is, you, it, 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 it is what you make of it. it the, everything depends what do you, you see. It's not that everybody sees it. It's just like, if you have glasses like I do, if the prescription is one way you can see, if it's another way you can't see anything. It depends how you, the world is not given. It's how you look at it. Tzitzis, the Reisim also, the mitzvah is to look at it. And the Chumash says, you look at the tzitzis, whose zechartim is called mitzvah Hashem. You'll remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem. How do you remember all the mitzvahs? By looking at tzitzis. All this is a bunch of strings. So Rashi says, because tzitzis is a gematria, the, the numerical value is 600, and there's 12, there's eight strings and four knots. And, 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 and also because the, the trailers reminds you of the sky and the sky reminds you of the Kisei So you can have two people. One person looks at the tzitzis. What do you see? Bunch of knots and strings. Nothing. Another person, you look at the tzitzis. Risa Moshe was a chartem is called mitzvah Hashem. You remember all the mitzvahs of Hashem. That, and that's a fitting epilogue for the parsha. That everything in life is... How you look at it is what is what determines what it is. I'll give you another example. I just remembered an esrog. You, if you have a feeling for the mitzvah, you're, you're, it's a pleasure to spend two hundred dollars on an esrog. You get a beautiful esrog. Wow, it's magnificent. You'll show it to somebody that doesn't know anything about the mitzvah rule of an esrog, and you tell them I spent two hundred dollars and. The person say, you're crazy. This is a lemon. <laughs> and even the name of it, a lemon. 
What in the world? What do you see? I said, yeah, well, you know why it's so nice? Because it's got bumps. <laughs> it's got blitos. That makes it worth more. Blitos makes it worth more. You are sugar. But it, 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 if you if you if you have a if you have a feeling for it, you understand what it means. Wow, a magnificent esog, and that's how the world is. You can either look at the world and it's a beautiful esog, it's a hadar, it creates hadar. Everything is stupendous, magnificent, unbelievable. Tovahar, it's ma'od ma'od. But for somebody else, there's nothing to look at. Uh, one final example is the Chumash says that when Avram went to the Akeda. I've been down which mountain. And it says, Avram saw the place from afar. So how did he know that was the place? So the Medjur says that Avram saw an unknown kosher at al He saw there was a cloud on the mountain. That was the cloud, the heaven, the, 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 the cloud of the heaven, the, the, the presence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So the, the Anani HaKavot. So Avram Avinu says to Yitzhak, what do you see? And he says, I see the same thing you see, Father. I see the, the, the cloud on the mountain. And then he turned to these two lads. He, he took with him Elazar and Yishmael Rashi says, and he said to them, what do you see? And the says, Avram told that they, they, they told in the Aram, stay here with the dog, we're going to, Yitzhak and I will go to the mountain. So the Medjish is explaining, why does Avram have to say, stay with the donkey? What do you have to talk about the donkey for? So the Medjish says, because Avram said to them, what do you see? And they said, we don't see anything. They're the people they went to see the, the Mona Lisa didn't see anything. The, 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 this was the, the, the Har Habayas. This is the place where the Shechina rests. Compared to the Mona Lisa. This is where the Shechina rests. This is the, the Shar Shemayim. This is where the angels go up and down to the Shemayim. And Avram saw that. But he asked in the arm, what do you see? They said, we don't see anything. So he says, the donkey doesn't see anything. You don't see anything. You stay with the donkey. Shvu echem po im hachamor. And that's what, I don't mean to say it in a derogatory way, but that's what we can, can say to, to, to people that, that, that think that we're living in a terrible country. Shvu echem po im hachamor. Okay, you see as much as a hachamor could see. You don't see anything. But it's not, it's, 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 it's how you look at, at America, how you look at the world, and it's our own circumstances as well. Everything depends on how you see it. It has to be, a person has to have the capacity of reism also, whose chartem is called Mitzvah Hashem. And he, he looks at it, not only the tzitzis, but he looks at the world around, and it's so beautiful and so magnificent. And we should go to Eretz Yisrael and spend as much time as we can there as well. And then when you do that, you see, you reason whose chartem is called Mitzvah Hashem, you, you feel the presence of a Baruch Hu, and you see the magnificent world that a Baruch Hu created for man. That's the type of, of seeing that the Torah wants. And the, the, Moshe Rabbeinu, when he sent them Ragam, he told them also that you should go see the land. But they, they failed to see the, re, the, the true reality. They saw their reality, but not the real reality. And we should not fall into the same pitfall. We should not be like the Misonanim. We shouldn't be fetches. And we shouldn't be like the Chamorim, that they don't see anything. We should be like the Kalev and Yeshua, that they saw the land and they said, Tova Ma'od Ma'od. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful Shabbos.